Hello folks, this is Nick and today we're going to talk about air mass and why it's so important in your hoop house. Ever since we have been designing the all metal hoop houses, we wanted them to be a little taller than what else is available on the market. And with the release of our new Gothic hoop houses, we've gone even taller. And we've got some questions about why air mass is so important and people wondering about temperature regulation and stuff like this. So I'm gonna give you the two examples I tell folks whenever we're on the phone. Number one, I have them think about three separate cups of coffee, large, medium, and small. If we pour the same boiling water or the same boiling coffee or tea into each one of those, the smallest one is going to get colder much faster and the larger one is going to hold the heat for longer. So I also give them the example that, remember when you're a kid and you went tent camping and as soon as that sun crests the horizon and starts heating up that tent, that thing gets hot real fast and you can't crawl out of there quick enough. Well, the same things are happening to your plant, but, but they can't leave. So just think about that small confined space and then think about how fast that temperature spikes. So in this scientific yet very unscientific demonstration, I heated up a pot of water at 32 ounces, two separate cups at 12 and nine ounces, and then a small two ounce bowl. And this kind of represents or is meant to represent anything from a 30 to a 20 to a 14 to a small greenhouse that you would get at like a big box store or off Amazon or something like that. So think anything like six to eight feet wide on that. In a bootstrap farmer, we have 30 foot houses, 20 foot houses, 14 foot houses. And now with the new gothics down to an 11 foot, four inch house, but we still have a little bit of air mass, but you can check out that in the link below and kind of get an idea what some of the different sizes are. So again, we boiled some water, poured them into the three different types of cups. And then every 30 minutes, I put a thermometer inside each one of the cups, the little bowl, and then the remaining 32 ounces inside of the tea kettle. And I came back every 20 minutes. And each time, no surprise, the temperature got a little less and a little less. And so if we put all the numbers on a graph, it kind of shows the two middle medium ones holding temperature, and across the board, everything is falling about at the same rate. But the difference is the 32 ounce is maintaining a higher temperature for much longer. And this is why this is important. In a hoop house situation, you're small, medium, and large, and this is going to be determined by length, width, and height. So again, the more air mass that's contained within a hoop house, the more air you have to buffer against the outside air. And for me, one of the other important things to consider is as that hoop house heats up, it's also heating up the ground where the roots are. Happy roots equal happy plants. The smaller the hoop house, the faster it heats up, and conversely, the quicker it cools down. The larger the hoop house, the slower it heats up, but also the slower it cools down. So when we consider all of the things that can happen to the outside of a greenhouse and underneath and the surrounding area of a hoop house, is we're gonna have a little overlap on the edges of a hoop house, where that cold air and the cold ground is going to fluctuate slightly. But towards the middle of that hoop house, all of that radiant energy throughout the day is going to build up and then more slowly release over the course of the night. Things like wind chill, rain, cloud cover, sun, the length of daylight hour during the seasons, all of this is going to affect that air on the outside and inside of the hoop house. And then there's also a water saturation issue to where if it rains a lot, that outside ground is going to be much wetter and hold water for much longer than the inside. But keep in mind, at the edges, if you don't do proper drainage, you do run the risk of having a little bit of water seep in through the edges and affect not only the perimeter of the inside of the hoop house, but it could affect the ground post over the length of time that this building is up. That's why we're so adamant about proper site prep. And if you need any information on that, we got a couple of videos in the Hoop House 101 and Hoop House 201 series. And again, I want you to remember that as the day progresses, that Hoop House is going to gain heat, gain heat, gain heat, and then it's going to slowly start losing heat during the night. So one thing to keep in mind is at the end of the day, don't be going in and out of your greenhouse and losing all that air mass that you've built up throughout the day. If it's the summertime, it's not a big deal. If it's the summertime, you can do things like vent. But at this time of the year, which this is November 2021, I really want people to start thinking about not losing that solar gain at the end of the day or the end of the night as you're going in and out of the hoop house. Remember to close your vents. Remember to roll down your sides. And let's give your plants as much time as possible to stay within that warmth and give those roots even more time to stay warm before that heat dissipates throughout the evening. 
So nothing too technical here, but just a couple of mindsets to keep on the forefront, especially if you're on the fence, you know, should you go uh, the next size up or should you go just a little bit longer when deciding which hoop house to buy? Hope that helps. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments below. Visit some of our resources. And if you find any of this helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. We've got a ton of videos coming out that we've spent the last few weeks shooting. And there's going to be a lot of good information coming out for the next few months. So we'll see you next time.